Welcome to the Global Peace Film Festival Lives Online Conversation 2022 Festival Edition. Please join me, Kelly Devine, the Artistic Director, and Nina Strike, the Executive Director, in conversation with the filmmakers Alexa Sheehan, Nancy McBride, and Julie Shahoub behind the film Surviving Pulse, Life After a Mass Shooting, which is part of the upcoming 20th Anniversary Global Peace Film Festival. All of our in-person events begin September 19th and end September 25th, followed immediately by our virtual film access beginning September 26th, ending October 2nd. Information about all of our events and activities can be found at peacefilmfest.org. And now let's welcome Alexa, Nancy, and Julie to talk about this important film. Thank you guys for joining us. Thanks for having us. It, yeah, it's an honor. It's Thank great you. to have you with us. You're a local filmmaking team. And just to introduce you a little bit, um, Alexa is the director, Nancy's the producer, and Julie is the editor of Surviving Pulse. So let's start out uh, by talking a little bit about, about the film. Tell us what it's about. Nance? <laughs> we all look at each other, that's funny. Um, the film is Surviving Pulse, Life After a Mass Shooting. And it is um, in 2016, um, we had um, a mass shooting at uh, Pulse Nightclub. L it was an LGBT cl club, uh, it was Latina night. And our film basically follows survivors over five years and their process of their tragedy, losing, loss, um, PTSD, and how they're trying to move forward after such a tragedy. And um, it's between survivors and also some family members that are share, want to share their story and talk about their loved ones. And, you and it's the process. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, it's, it's, it's the pro we, we weren't just making it over that time. We were interviewing every six months to a year to follow what it's like. So it's not this little encapsulated, let me tell you a story. We're never on camera. It's all them the whole time. And Julia's post uh, producer was able to help craft the story. So it wasn't, it starts off pretty hard. The, the beginning's tough because you got to get through it. But then we end with this message of hope and strength. And so it's not, it's a human interest story is what it is. There. And, and I would like to add to that too. It is a journey. It's a journey that, you know, we go through this process and um, in creating these stories or, you know, crafting them, as you said, um, I did a lot of research to make sure that I wasn't putting anything in there that had been seen before. These interviews are with people whose stories have never been heard. So these are not something that you can just, you know, look on YouTube and hear them you know, repetitively, these are the first time they're being heard. In their words. And that was important to us. And it's not political, it's not religious, it's not anything. There's no skew on it whatsoever. This this is how they, they're they surviving in their words, it's their journey. And, and it's, it's, it's pretty fabulous in the end, I think. And I'm not sure if this is the time or place for it, but it, it was an evolution. It started out as one thing. That's true. And then we, it evolved as I started crafting the story. When Nancy brought me in, um, it was 2020 and it was a Zoom call for probably women in film. And I, I was there early and I heard her say something about, yeah, I'm working on this documentary. I really need an editor. And I'm like, oh, hello, here I am. Mm -hmm. And we ended up talking later and I mean, just hit it off immediately, spent several hours on the phone not even talking necessarily about the film, but once we dove into the subject matter and she told me some of the stories that they, they had captured, I'm like, oh my gosh, absolutely I'm in. I had to, I had to be a part of it. And, um, and I was just, I, I couldn't believe every word she said is exactly what they told. It was just amazing to me and heartbreaking, but at the same time, heartwarming because Hopefully, once you see this, you'll just want to reach out and hug everybody. And what can I do to help? Yeah. Well said. Chef's kiss. <laughs> I've seen it a few times. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. A thousand. <laughs> hundred thousand. 
Mm. Well, can you talk a bit about um, maybe just kind of uh, uh, elaborating on the film, the finished product, Julie, you had mentioned as a journey, but you also alluded all three of you taking a journey in terms of, of where you started and where you ended up in, uh, you know, so can you talk about what you all learned along the way? Well, that's two questions. Cause we started, we started off, uh, the original title was what well, forgotten survivors, forgotten pulse survivors, I think was our original title. And then we just kept shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting. And then poor Julie came on board and we're like, here's 8,000 hours of footage. Yay. And then once we started telling that story and we, we, we could have made four films out of the footage we got, but once we started going down the path and we saw how their journey was happening and where they were forgotten. And then we're like, well, wait a second. Then there was another mass shooting and another mass shooting and pulse was forgotten completely in most circles. So it, oh shoot, I get on tangents and I'm like, pew, pew. Um, <laughs> so by the end, it, we, we thought it was more important to be a little more specific about it. The title changed, our trajectory changed and the final product is what uh, you guys will be, in, uh, I can't say enjoying, that you will be viewing, that you will be ingesting. Is that better? And the big thing about, the big thing about the film is that, and like Alexa said, there, there's been, over 344 mass shootings since Colt, which just breaks my heart. But what we what we learned in the process is that what's missing, and this is going to be relevant to all the families out there that have had to endure a mass shooting, is you're forgotten in five years. You know, our, um, our and not to be political, but our governor cut funding on the PTSD um, counseling for survivors at five years. Pulse survivors, specifically yeah, pulse, pulse, survivors. pulse survivors. So what happens to, you know, you can't put a time frame on PTSD. So what happens to all these families? What happens to the Vegas people, the Boulder people, the Austin people, you know, Sandy Hook, um, all of these people that are still struggling to mm -hmm. make, you know, just wrap their heads around it or heal, um, you know, it's, there's no help. And that's the problem that we learned. Julie had put a great quote. It was like, for every mass shooting, for one person in a mass shooting, about 50 people are affected. You know, a mother, a brother, a sister, a best friend, a girlfriend, you know, a wife, a cousin. And, and you times that times R49, that's about 2,500 people that were affected for this mass shooting, directly affected, you know? And, and so now we're talking five years later, or actually we're at six years, yeah. what, you know, how, how do we keep helping them? Mm -hmm. And that's what we learned is that there is no help for them. But we, we expanding on the other mass shootings, we're hoping these stories help them. They're not alone, if that makes sense. So, so is there a target audience for this? No, not really. But it's everybody. Really, yeah. we want to, we want to help these people be heard and like when the funding got cut the the response was well they can go sign up for the other funding that we have so now you're victimizing the victim again now they have to sit on the phone again they, they're losing their work because they're sitting on the phone trying to get any help they can whether it be emotional uh, uh um it's it's staggering staggering so we're hoping that this can help people that have gone through something traumatic um find a, a little path a little light Alexa said something about um, target audience. And one of the things that I felt was really important was making sure that this is a film for everybody. It is not a film for black people. It is not a film for LGBTQ plus. It's, it's a film for everyone because everyone should have an understanding of what these people and anyone in a mass shooting has to endure. And in this case, it does go down the road of what specifically some of these LGBTQ people are enduring, but it is a film for everyone. And hopefully people will get that feeling from it that like, holy crap, this is not something we want anyone else to have to go through. And if I may sidestep back to what we've learned from doing this film on, on maybe a more simple basis, um, Alexa and Nancy were the ones that captured 
like 90% of the footage. I was only in person for the uh, the final, you know, when we talked about the five years later. And so they really developed a relationship with these people. And for them, it was a relationship. relationship. Mine is a relationship through the video that I've seen. And so I have what I call the editor's curse because I have seen it so many times and I've heard them speaking so openly and so raw to, to the camera that I feel like I know them. And I think once you all see this film, hopefully you'll feel the same way. You'll feel like you know these people. But when I got to meet them for the first time, it was like, oh, hey. like big hugs. And you're like, oh, sorry, you don't know Who me. Who are you? The one that was on the <laughs> other end of the phone or on the email or something. But um, it's it's definitely been a longer journey for them. And I'm so grateful to have been brought in to help craft the stories. Well, in Can terms I... of, of the, the difficult choice that you guys made to have a difficult opening, um, you know, can you talk about um, a little bit about why you made that, why it's important and, and some of the, um, uh, you know, ways in which you want people to be prepared for what they will see in the beginning of the film? Thank you for that. Cause we had, uh, after the first screen, like, we have to put a, a, a trigger warning cause there is, there are flashing lights, but the PTSD it's footage from inside the club. You have to, you have to put the viewer there. You have to, cause the sounds and the visuals are super intense, but you need, you need to get that slap in the face so that when it, when you, you can understand these people, you can hear them. And, and also, other, yeah, we also didn't name the shooter. We don't do, we don't, this is not a gratuitous film. This is human interest story. Uh, sorry, Julie, go ahead. No, oh, I'm sorry. I was, I, I, from my point of view, the thought process was, what was Pulse? We need to introduce, because again, mm -hmm. this is a film for everyone. What was Pulse? So we spent just a little time introducing what Pulse was, this nightclub. Then what happened? So, you know, let's say this is seen, hopefully seen around the world, somebody who may not be as familiar with, you know, the Orlando mass shooting. Um, and then, so it introduces you to that. And then it takes you on the journey of the people that you've seen and maybe some that you have not seen describing that story. So that was the intention of the beginning to answer that part of the question. Uh, very good. Uh, any? Did anybody have any other thoughts they wanted to add to that? Because it is a really important uh, uh, approach that you you very deliberately had taken. I think the girls handled it perfect. <laughs> and, and Fantastic. So perfect. Fantastic. And um, you know, just to, to uh, uh, tag back to you know what we hope people will take away from the film and the experience. Uh, that's a big part of why we programmed uh, this film or any of the films that we program is that um, we really, besides bringing people compelling stories, we really hope to jumpstart conversations and to jumpstart positive action. And that's a, you know, that's a centerpiece of the Global Peace Film Festival. Um, so if, if you guys could, you know, maybe take turns talking about what you hope people will take away uh, how you hope that uh, this film will have a positive impact on the communities that see it? As a positive impact on the community, I hope leaders will see what struggle individuals have after a tragedy like this. I mean, like we said, 300, over 344 since mass shooting, mass shooting since Pulse. So it's not, it's not local, it's everywhere, you know? And what can we do as a, as a whole to one, prevent it? Um, two, how can we make sure that we're still helping and supporting emotionally the survivors, the families of the victims and, and helping them get to a point um, that they can do day-to-day -day activities? And, and, and move forward the best, you know, the best of their abilities. Um, that's really what we want to see. Um, yeah, and to piggyback off of that, we're trying to make a point that, you know, when something like this happens, any tragedy, it's not a soundbite for your political, you know, thing for next year. Oh, it's, it's an election year. I better, uh, I better, better show that I care about these people because they vote. No, <laughs> this is not about being a soundbite. 
It's to raise awareness for the issues. It's to get people thinking and get people talking about it. And one of the greatest things we can hear when someone comes out of the, the screening, we did a test screening before we had finished, was I just, I didn't understand. I just didn't understand. I saw what I saw on the news and that's all I knew. And now it's humanized. And Julie, didn't you say one of the people we interviewed was like, I just wanted to hug these people. That's what needs to happen. And how can I help and where can I go? And that's, that's for me, what I would like to happen. And those that are suffering to, to see that there are, there are avenues to, to healing. And then one last thing to add to that is I think, um, we don't personally have anything set up where you can go and help these people, but we would like, I hope I speak for all of us that do your research to see where you're donating, where is that money going? Is it truly going to help the people you think it's going to help? Or, um, you know, there are some organizations out there that might be helping in a way where they're building a, a museum versus physically giving money to the people who need it. So just do your research and know who you're donating to and where that money is going. But by all means, you know, help if you can, because there's, there's a lot of people still suffering. Those are all such really important points. Um, so tell us, uh, beyond the screening at the Global Peace Film Festival, both in the in-person screening and the virtual, the week of virtual screenings, um, tell us what's happening with the film, where, you know, what's next for the film and how people can, can see it beyond the Global Peace Film Festival. And then, um, I'll come back with another question. Let you do this first. And <laughs> okay. Currently, we're in the film festival circuit. We're pro um, in the process of there's 10 different film festivals. We hit Florida really hard with the film festivals. So um, because it was, you know, our home. Um, so currently, we're circulating in 10, 10 film, fe film festivals. Um, Treasure Coast is coming up and um in florida and then um real deal real deals coming up um so there's a few more in the florida area you can watch it and then some of them outside of the florida market then we're also working with distributors trying to find a home for it currently for a bigger audience yes great and um so now tell us each of you what's next for each of you Oh dear. <laughs> That's a loaded question. That is a loaded question. Wow. Um, I, I've got another documentary that I um, will start probably, I would say, in, in the next six months. Um, and that will be based on, um, it's, called, it's called Compatible with Life. And that's based on a genetic disorder that... Um, are, is plaguing our community with um, children and how the medical professionals don't believe that these children have the, um, have, the, have the ability to live. So they try to comfort care and let them pass after birth. And as a community, we're fighting for more medical intervention because the children can live with right intervention. That's it? That's, That's it. all you got? <laughs> all I got right now, baby. <laughs> um, Julie, I don't even know where to start. Go, but go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, well, the cool thing about this project, it seems to have kickstarted um, me down the road of doing projects that help others. So I'm working on probably, I think it's like four or five different short docs right now. One feature doc that is hopefully going to get some funding so that we can get it get it really rolling but it's just really cool because I've always my entire life wanted to help people and I've done things even in my professional you know corporate career um, where I have produced direct and edited spots that were more like PSAs that show how you know this company has helped these people now I'm being led down this road of showing, you know, whether it's conservation of our oceans and how we can help, you know, save the manatees and various uh, marine life to uh, indigenous people who, who not 
saying what they what they've been through because a lot of us have heard you know you know what they've been through but what how did they overcome and then uh, another doc about um, African Americans and their uh, their being lost in history and trying to recover that. So there's there's a whole group of things that I've been working on that is just really fascinating. I'm so grateful to do things that hopefully can help other people in various capacities. And Alexa, I, guess I, I guess I have to go now. Thanks a lot, Julie. Um, I've just always had my hand in a whole bunch of different pots. Um, the the as Julie said, the majority of the interviews were done on my sound equipment, my lighting, my camera, my everything. Um, so my little production company here in New Smyrna Beach, I do a lot of uh, local stuff. Don't make a lot of money doing it, but it's important, like the um, schools that want to do uh, uplifting videos or um, the local surf camp and, you know, whatever. So I just do, and political season is always good for me because they don't have a ton of money to produce content but they have enough to pay me. So I go and I'm a one man band and we shoot the stuff. So political season is always good for me and my business. Um, I'm also on the board of directors for Women in Film and Television Florida, Film Florida. Um, I'm on the board for Daytona State College and their media center. Um, actually, I wouldn't say I'm on the board. What's my title? I'm on, I'm on the, uh, um, oh shoot, whatever. I help, I, they, I help them do things. And then uh, OTAC, which is in Orlando, I'm on their board as well as the chair. So there's just, there's always something cooking, always, always. But I have a question for you two, I guess, depending on who, where the Zoom is, uh, you and you, there, that was from my screen. Um, what did you take away from the film? Don't give anything away because people haven't seen it yet. <laughs> That's true. Well, they, they're hearing from us, but I wanna hear from them. Nina? Uh, well, it, I, it's such a long road to healing, both physically and even more so emotionally because you can't see the physical scar, uh, you know, you can't see the scars. And I thought the film really, I actually, I, I thought the, you know, the, as we discussed the, the hit at the beginning, that how tough it was at the beginning really does you know, open your eyes that this, you know, we all remember, we all remember the incident, but, but seeing, you know, yeah. seeing the, how, and hearing um, how awful it was um, is very necessary to, you know, to basically situate you. And I thought that um, they were people that we haven't heard from um, who are on long, long roads to recovery um, uh, and if, you know, if recovery is even the word for it, yeah. um, and I thought you guys did a really great job with it. Um, you. you know, and, and, and yes, uh, it does end on a note of hope. And so, um, another thing I want to see is the, you know, is, is the various groups um, and individuals working on on gun safety legislation, on you know, on working for gun safety, is is so critical. Um, and that was the other reason why we wanted to program it because we want to we want to give a um, you know give a platform to those organizations to get more you know to get more people engaged with them. Awesome. Thank you, Nina. Kelly, do you have anything? Yeah, I'm just echoing uh, what Nina said, but I really want to underline um, the reason that the festival's tagline is it starts here is that if we were a traditional film festival that was um, uh, showcasing the craft of filmmaking alone, um, things end when the lights come up. But for us, when the lights come up, that's when it begins. And so the idea mm -hmm. that um, we program films that we really hope will inspire people to take whatever action or change that they can within their own lives sometimes, but also in their broader community, because you're, you know, as you've all mentioned, um, Pulse, unfortunately, wasn't an exception in our country. So we, this is something that we need to pay attention to. 
Well, we're honored, so honored that you chose us. So thank you. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, it's uh, it's mutual. Uh, we're 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 so happy to be able to give you a platform, and as Nina said, to bring your film together with groups and our audiences, uh, hopefully, um, to inspire that change that we want to see in the world. So, thank you, Alexa, Nancy, and Julie. Um, this is the uh, team you've been talking, you've been listening to uh, behind Surviving Pulse, Life After a Mass Shooting. If you want to find out more about this, uh, this important film, please consider going to pulsedocumentary.com. And again, this film will be part of our in-person programming, which begins September 19th and runs through September 25th as well as available on demand during our virtual programming, beginning September 26th, ending October the 2nd. All the information about our events and activities can be found at peacefilmfest.org. Thank you again, and we'll see you at the next GLOW.